Praise Yahweh. Praise oh, praise Yahweh. Hallelujah. 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 Are you glad to be in the house of Yahweh on today? On this side, hallelujah. Able to give him praise. Able to give him honor. Able to lift him up. Lifting the Savior up is what we were created to do. Give him glory. Give him honor. Magnify the Lord. He's worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm excited on today. Hallelujah. I'm excited. On today. Hallelujah. He's worthy. I'm thankful for what he's done this week. How many of you know he's a way maker? Can I get a witness? Amen. He's a way maker. He's a way maker. He's a way maker. He's a way maker. Out of nowhere, he's a way maker. When you can't see it, he's a way maker. When you're trying to make it, He's a way maker. Hallelujah. See him? He's a way maker. Over the mountain, he's a way maker. In the valley, he's a way maker. When my mind ain't on it, he's a way maker. When my heart don't feel it, he's a way maker. Hey, I got huh? He's a way maker. Out of nowhere, when I can't figure it out, he's a way maker. He makes things happen out of no way. He is a way maker. Yeah. That's all I know him to be. Hallelujah. 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 I don't know about you, but some situations was going on this week with me. It seemed like everything naturally was going good, but it was with me. But how many of you know he's a way maker? He's a way maker. Over your mind, over your thoughts, he's a way maker. Over your money, he is a way maker. Over enemies, he is a way maker. Through trials and tribulation, he's a way maker. No matter what you're going through, no matter what you feel like, no matter what the doctor says, no matter what your head may say, no matter what your mind may tell you, no matter what happened in the past, I know my God to be a way maker. Through everything, he's a way maker. You can't figure it out, but I know he's a way maker. I can stand on the promises that he is a way maker out of no way. Turn my darkness into light. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now I can see that he made a way. Hallelujah. Glory. Father, we thank you. We give you glory. We give you honor. But this is the day that you have made. We shall rejoice and be glad. And we thank you for being the awesome ruler The mighty God, the everlasting Father. You're the Prince of Peace. Hallelujah. You said we are the head and not the tail. Father, I thank you for the victory. I thank you for everything that you're doing. And Father, most of all, I thank you for being a way maker. Can I get a praise in here? Hallelujah. 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 Leave it at the altar. Give your burdens to the Lord and leave them there. Because he is a way maker. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Woo. My God reign. My God reign. My God reign. My God reign. Lord, you reign above every name.
Yeah. 
you. Has he been good to you? Has he been good to you? Hallelujah is the highest praise. It's the least we can do. It's a hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's the word. with this one. I don't know about y'all, but the Lord has been good to me. Hallelujah! Woo! In the morning, you know, sometimes you get up in the morning and, and you're up by yourself, hallelujah, and you, you go sit down and you, you start thinking and meditating on the goodness of Yahshua, hallelujah, and all the things he's done for you, and I don't care whether you've gone through some ups and downs and everything, but you still got joy because of what he's done for you, hallelujah. It doesn't matter, hallelujah, whether your finances low, you still got joy. It doesn't matter if your spouse act up, you still got joy. It doesn't matter if pain racking your body, you still got joy. Yeah! Woo! Hallelujah! Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're going to slow it down a little. Eh, glory. 
I, I just can't get enough of thanking him for how good he is. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's good. He, do you really, 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 really know how good he is? When you lay hands on yourself, or that pain or whatever is going on in your body, and you trust the word of Yahweh, and you just keep thanking him even though the pain is still there. And you keep thanking him and thanking him and thanking him. And after a while you say, Lord, I really thank you. Because that pain is gone. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because let me tell you, he's a doctor in the sick room. He's a lawyer in the courtroom. Hallelujah. He's everything you stand in need of. He is that. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You may please be seated. Y'all, it's good. Oh, he's so good. Woo. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, hallelujah. Hey, glory. Woo. Yeah, 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 yeah. Woo. Hallelujah. 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 Glory, 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 glory. Hallelujah. 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 He's a mother when you're motherless. He's a father when you're fatherless. My God, he's everything we stand in need of. We thank Yahweh for our ones, the ones that are looking at us virtual, we praise Yahweh for you. We pray that as this word go forth, that it be a blessing to your spirit. You know, Charles Stanley, he always used the word listen. He said, listen, listen, listen. So I pray that our virtual viewers are listening because you can hear and not listen. How many know that? I know I hear my husband a lot, but I don't be listening. And He'll come back and say, Deborah, uh, I told you, you remember I told you that? And I said, no, you didn't tell me nothing. He told me, I just wasn't listening. Y'all understand what I'm saying? That's why when we hear, we need to listen. I tell people sometimes, I say, you know, I can tell a summer person up by what I hear if I'm listening. But you got to be listening because there's always something there that Yahweh will show you that's really going on inside of that person. Am I right about it? So I understand now why Charles Stanley would say, listen. Now listen, listen. Those of you who watch him know that. He always used that word, listen. Amen. So I pray by the grace of God that we are here, not just to hear the word of Yahweh, but to listen to the word of Yahweh. Amen. Father, you in the name of Yahshua HaMashiach. Father, we thank you and we praise you, Father. We thank you for your visitation. We thank you for being here with us today, Father. We thank you for your anointing that destroys yoke and removes burdens. We thank you, Father, that as we go through this word, Father, that as we hear your word and listen to your word, Father, that we will also be a doer of your word, Father, because our desire, Father, is to do your word, hallelujah, be obedient to your word, Father, live a holy life, Father, and, Father, we thank you, Father, and we praise for each and every one that's here today, Father. Saturate their heart, Father. Put your arms around, your loving arms around them, Father. For those who don't feel love, Father, love up on them, Father. For those who are going through disappointment, Father, give them joy and peace, Father. Oh, Father, we just thank you, Father, for being an almighty Yahweh. We thank you, Father, that we are sanctified, Father, that we are believers in you, Father. We are holy. Hallelujah. And we thank you that we have the Ruha HaKadish here with us today, Father, to lead, guide, teach, talk for us, hallelujah, intercede for us, teach us, Father. We thank you, Father. And we give you all the honor, we give you all the praise and all the admiration. Yashir Hamas, your name we pray. Amen, amen. Amen. I thank Yahweh for our pastor of this great church, Apostle Johnny Grant. Amen, amen, amen. For all the fivefold ministries, the pastor, the prophet, the teacher, the evangelist, hallelujah. 
and the apostles. I give Yahweh all the honor and all the praise for deacon, deaconettes, and all those that are here at the temple of Yahshua. This is a, a great ministry. What makes it so great? I think I could call just about anybody in this uh, sanctuary and they can give a word. And I can feel the love. I can feel, I can actually feel the love that you have for Yahweh here today. Amen. Amen. Well, Pastor Grant, how can you do that? Because I operate in the gift. And when you operate in them gifts, you can pick up spirits. Amen. You know where they you know whether they're good and you know whether they're bad. Amen. Amen. You know what's going on in their life. Amen. But I didn't hear to come talk to y'all about that. We're going to be coming from Isaiah 53 and 1. Amen. Oh. My subject is who do you believe? Oh man, oh, I tell you Yahweh is so good. We've been having some good teaching. Awesome, awesome teaching. Talked about power and authority. And on last Sunday as we was having um, Bible study, um, Evangelist Moore taught it so well. And the comments was just phenomenal. It was just so great. And um, he was hitting on some things that our apostle was going to be talking about today. So I'm saying, Lord, okay. I enjoy this word, you know. It gives me a little bit more nuggets. Who do you believe? And this is a problem that the world definitely is going to do what they do. But as believers, we struggle with it. Amen. And, and I'm going to be coming from the Amplified Bible. Who has believed, confidently, trust in, rely on, adhere to our message of salvation? And to whom, if not us, has arm in infinite power of the Lord been revealed. In chapter 52 of Isaiah, it, Isaiah was a prophet. He was a, a major prophet. And in 52, chapter 52, I'm just going to give you a little summary of it. He was basically talking about the things that Yahshua was going to go through, and Yahshua wasn't even on the scene. That's, that's a prophet. That's what he called to do. God, Yahweh gives him visions and dreams, Okay. So he was prophesying about Yahshua coming to the scene. Amen. And he said, now, didn't he get in 53? He said, who has believed our report? Now, and, and, and I'm asking the Holy Spirit to really lead and guide me on this one right here because we hear a lot of things, a lot of things. And a lot of time, as born again believers, until we get into the word of Yahweh, we go by what we hear, what we see, what we feel, what we taste. We, we really walk on our five senses. That's the way the world have taught us. Amen? But Yahweh, God Almighty, through from the very beginning, he been with his people, talking with his people, ministering to his people how he want them to live. Amen? Now, when I looked up the word, I wanted to look up report. A spoken or written account of something that one has observed and heard, done, or investigated. Let's look at believe. It was two strong words. It just, you know, I felt that the Holy Spirit was leading, guiding me to, um, to pull out of that one. Accept something, accept something as true, feeling sure of the truth. Now, you know, all of us know about Hebrews 1, where it said, now... Not yesterday, not tomorrow, but now, not next year, amen, but now, amen. He said, now, faith is of things hoped for and evidence of things not seen. So it's unseen. <laughs> faith, you don't see it, but you believe it, all right? I see that this is is red. That's red. That looked like it's red. It's red, right? Amen. But I'm going to believe in the impossible that is going to turn blue on me. Okay? Because faith is supernatural. The faith here, we talk about supernatural because you don't see it, but you believe it, right? Amen. 
Let's go somewhere else. I want to take y'all, because um, who report has you believed is in so many scriptures. Let's go to John 12, 35 and 38. Oh, whoa, 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 before we go there, I want I want to establish something here again. Let's go to Isaiah five. I'm gonna back it up to, uh, to three. Probably by the he was despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrow, pain, and acquainted with grief. And like one from whom men hide their faces, he was despised, and we did not appreciate his worth or esteem him. But in fact, he has bored our grief, he has carried our sorrow and pain, yet we ignorantly assume that he was stricken, struck down by Yahweh, degraded and humiliated by him. But he was wounded for our transgression, he was crushed for our wickedness, our sins, our injustice, our wrongdoing, the punishment required for our well-being fell on him. Mm -mm, that's why we thank God and praise him. Hallelujah. And by his stripes, wounds, we were what? Healed. Say that again. Healed. All right, that E-D on there. Okay, so Isaiah prophesied about that in the Old Testament before y'all sure came. Okay? A lot of time, and I, I want to touch on that because we, we cripple sometimes by sickness and disease, okay? Do Yahweh gave man the ability to, um, I want to use the right word on this right here. Doctors are very good, and their knowledge comes from Yahweh, amen? But no way you're going to read they heal. Their medicine do not heal you. What it does, it affects us in a way that we have to have more. I remember when my father was, um, and he was a man that basically did, uh, uh, you know, try to eat healthy. But as you get older, you don't care. You can't tell an old person hardly nothing. I hate to say that, and I pray that whoever's listening to this is up in age, do not get uh, offended by it. But a lot of time, as elders, and I find it with myself, we don't listen. Your children try to tell you things. They'll tell them, Mama, you don't need to be eating that fried chicken. Now, I find about that when I go in and, and pray by the grace of God, my cholesterol's not up. Because I've been warned. Okay? Yahweh give us warning, and we don't know how that warning is going to come. But he give us warning, okay? But now, now when I find myself frying or eating some fried chicken, all I can think about is my children telling me, Mama, you don't need that. Amen? What am I saying? Yahweh is the one who heal us. So when we go for a report, that's where it goes back to who report are you going to believe? I'm healed. Do not come in agreement. You, you hear them, but you're not listening to them. You're listening to the word of Yahweh. Y'all get it? You hear them, but you, listen, you got the word in you. So what you're going to do, you're going to listen to what you already know. Who report are you going to believe? Do not come in agreement with them because if you do, it's going to happen. Okay? So who report are you going to believe? Amen? So the right there, he tells us we already healed. I'm going to believe the report of the Lord. I know it works. Before I go for a mammogram, weeks before I go for my mammogram, you have your date, you know when you're supposed to go to the doctor. You start believing Yahweh for your healing. The first thing he said, I'm going for a good report. I'm not going for the doctor to tell me something negative. I'm just going to, to, to come in agreement that I'm doing good. That's what they get paid for, y'all. Very few of them is going to give you a good report because that's how money is being made through the pharmaceuticals, through medicine. But God, Yahweh is telling us that now I'm here to tell y'all that by his stripes, you already healed. So when you go to the doctor, you already, like I said, you already know what, you, what do I'm going to do? I'm going to start reciting scriptures over my body before I go. Let me tell you how I operate in faith, and I told y'all this before. So when I go for my mammogram, they tell you, said, do not put your, you know, your clothes back on until we uh, let you know how everything is going. I have my clothes on when they come there. So all they got to do is clip my little thing, and I'm ready to go. That's faith. Amen? And I did that from the very start. 
You got to walk by faith and not by what they say. Okay? I'm not looking for you to tell me nothing uh, or something negative. So why should I wait to put my clothes on? I'm going to put my clothes on now. Because I walk by faith and not by sight. I don't walk by what you tell me. But you got to have the word of Yahweh inside of you. Okay? Amen, amen. Let's go to John 12. St. John 12, 35 through 38. If you dare say amen. So Jesus said, Yahshua said to them, the light is among you. Only a little while longer. Walk while you have the light. Keep on living by it so that darkness will not overtake you. Now we know what darkness is, right? Everybody know what darkness is. Okay. He who walk in darkness does not know where he is going. He is drifting aimless. So when you're in the dark, I always tell my husband, like, darkness. And I guess, you know, he's just like, darkness. I like light. The light to be on in the house. Okay, y'all, that's what I mean by that. But Pastor Grant do not walk in darkness. He walks in the light. But I like a lot of light. Okay, and he'll prefer the light to be off. And, um, and what I tell him, I said, I'm going to tell you what I tell him. I said, uh, John, you know, you're getting up there. I don't want to be stumbling through the darkness. You know, and then I have to step up to go in my bedroom. And, man, I tell you, that's a job now. That's why I'm telling you, as you get older, it, it takes a little bit more to do things. Used to be time I could just hop up there. Now I'm, I'm feeling this is where I'm going through the house like this right here, feeling my way around. <laughs> so you got to, when you're in the darkness, you can't see. But when you're in the light, you can see, you can see spiritually. Amen. He who walk in darkness does not know where he is going. He is drifting aimless. While you have light, believe and trust in the light. Have faith in it. Hold on to it. Rely on it so that you may become sons of light, being filled with light as followers of Yahweh. Yahshua said these things, and then he lift and hid himself from them. Even though he had done so many signs, attesting and miracles right before them, yet, oh my God, Yet they still not believe and fail to trust him. Now, he doing all these things in front of him. Blinds being able to see. So many people he raised from the dead. And it, something wrong with you when you see all this stuff and you don't believe. Come on, y'all. Something wrong with you. Something is definitely wrong with you. Okay, then. Sometimes it's something wrong with us then. Yahweh do things in our life. We'll go to him and say, uh, God, uh, will you do this and, and pray? Oh, we'll pray for something that's going wrong. And he'll bring us through. But we still don't believe. Something else will come up. And we, and we, we get nervous. Sometimes we'll faint. Sometimes we'll leave the church. Y'all know why? Because we don't really believe. If we're really truthful with ourselves, we really don't believe the word of Yahweh. If we did, we wouldn't sometimes get in the predicament that we get into. Do you really believe? Do you really believe? In the word? And let me tell you about Yahweh. He know us. He know everything about us. He knows when we believe and we don't believe. We can do all kind of lip movement and, and tell people this and tell people that. But Yahweh know everything about you. We might as well be honest. Be honest with him. Just tell him. He wants you to talk to him. He's your daddy. And guess what? We're children. I don't care how old we get, we're his children. Amen. Just like our children come to us and they expect things out of us and they ask us for things. Well, guess what? That's what we're supposed to do with Yahweh. But I'm going to tell you what he loved, obedience. He loved obedience. Amen. All right, let's go a little further. This was, the, okay, even though he had done so many uh, signs, attested miracles right before them, yet they still did not believe and failed to trust him. This was to fulfill what Isaiah the prophet said. Lord, who has believed our message? So it's going back to, the, uh, to Isaiah 53 and 1. Who, who has believed our report? All that you've done, can you imagine the blind being able to see? The 
the deaf be able to hear and the dumb can talk. People raised from the dead and they still want to walk in darkness. They still don't believe. Who's going to believe our report? See, we got to believe Yahweh's report. God tell he got so many benefits for us. So many benefits for us. So much he has for us. But we, 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 our hands is like this right here, and he can't do nothing for us. The Bible tell me, and, 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 and you know, one, one struggles that we have money sometimes can have a grip on us. It did me. I'm going to talk about me. And the reason I had a grip, now, well, let me share something with you. The reason I had a grip on me, because I was in the world. I wanted to do what the world wanted to do. So when you get saved, you don't know how to be saved. That's the whole idea of Paul writing the Pauline letters. They didn't know how to be saved. So Paul said, you know, y'all, now you have received salvation. You need to know how to live safe. So when we get born again, we need to li know how to live safe. Viewers, if you're just getting born again, you need to know how to be safe. You need to get into the word of Yahweh, especially the Pauline letters, which is the, uh, the, in the New Testament after the full gospel. And you need to learn how we're supposed to walk as children in the light. Amen. Because money had a, a grip on me, and it wasn't an idea I didn't have it, but I spent it the wrong way. And I gave, I would do, I was doing stuff and wasn't giving what belonged to Yahweh. Y'all hear what I'm saying? And when I got a hold of it, and I thank Yahweh because when my husband got saved, you know, it, it didn't take as much from he had his issues like we all do when we get saved. We have to uh, learn how to live safe, but I'm not talking about issues. I'm going to talk about mine. But it was things that he, he would do that I realized it was working for him. And he was listening to um, Dr. Frederick Price at the time, and Dr. Price was telling what he was doing and how the Lord was blessing him and his finances. And so my husband said, well, if it'll work for Charles Stanley, it'll work for, I'm not Charles Stanley, but Frederick Price, it'll work for me. So... When I realized that my husband was getting tired of me coming to him, asking to pay my bills off that seemed like I couldn't stop doing, using them credit cards out there, um, after a while, I felt ashamed to go to him. Now, let me tell you, when you really get delivered, when you get shamed. <laughs> Y'all hear what I'm saying? Sometimes you got to go through it some, and I was shame. Anytime you go on the third and fourth time, come on, something wrong with you. And I realized it was something wrong with me. See, a lot of people don't realize. They, let me tell you something about me and Yahweh. We talk. Yahweh, I got a problem. I need your help. This is getting to be embarrassing now. I'm sick of it. And, 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 and old, uh, that old man would come up and say, it's all right. No, it's not all right. I'm sick of it. I'm tired of it. So, apostle, you know, start telling me, say, you know, after a while I saw how his money was increasing and mine wasn't doing nothing. And when I tell you nothing, absolutely nothing, making good money from one paycheck to another. Did overtime, I had, I, let me share, my Lord, my overtime money was spent before I got it. Because that's why I worked overtime. I already decided what I was going to buy with my overtime money. Yeah, yeah, I'm sick. Sick, sick. Come on, y'all. We, we sometimes have sickness. And we don't own up to them, and we don't get delivered from them. Okay? We'll listen to somebody else's sickness, but I'm all right. No, we're all dealing with something. Well, I was sick. And when my husband, sick, saved now. I'm sick, saved. Save and sick. I'm saved and sick. So when my husband, <laughs> and he would often tell me, he said, Deborah, something wrong with you. We got that kind of relationship, and we still married. He said, <laughs> he said, Deborah, something wrong with you. Ain't nothing wrong with me. <laughs> Some people have habits. They do this and they do that. Buying is my habit, and I'm not spending. That's what I would tell him. I'm not spending your money. I'm spending my money. Mm, 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 mm. <laughs> and we still married. <laughs> so what I'm saying <laughs> I was thinking him the other day, yesterday I was telling him and, you know, reminiscing, you know, you know, and, and telling him, I thank the Lord for you. <laughs> I've 
had a pretty good life. <laughs> you know? But, um, but we got to believe the word of Yahweh. And I knew what the word said about tithes and offering. That's where I was going to. And um, so what I had to do, I had to make a plan. I had to get a plan of how I was going to do my tithes and offering. And I, I, at that time, I, I, I'm going to tell you the truth. I told my husband, I said, John, I might go through some withdrawal like an alcoholic. But, you know, just <laughs> bear with me. That's how bad it was. I'm going to have some withdrawals. But I'm going to put my money with you. I'm my, my money is going to go with your money. Oh, my goodness. And I did that about three times. John make me mad, I pull my money back. <laughs> telling me what I can't get. Oh, you telling me I can't buy what? That was it for that? But the Holy Ghost spoke to me at work and told me, he said, put your money with your husband. I said, Lord, that's about the only way I'm going to be able to do this right here. And, um, and I went to him, and I told him, I said, well, I told him exactly what the Lord told me to do, but that was the best thing I could have ever done. Because I had to learn how to do it. And then I said, no, I got to do this on my own. And then I started doing it on my own. And I saw the blessing of it. And because I got to believe the report of the Lord, what the Lord to tell me to do. He told me, give my tithes and offering. Amen. He said, I'm supposed to pay. And I know his teacher out there talking about that. But I'm telling y'all, it worked for me. Okay, so once I started doing then he told me, he said, you know, you know, we, we give, you know, God love a cheerful giver. So I started, I did what he did. I started increasing mine. You'll never lack for anything. You'll never want for anything. And then I throw that principle out there to my children. Throw it out there to your children because you ain't got to worry about them coming to you asking for nothing. Because the Lord will start blessing them. They start coming back telling me, Mama, it works. Mama, it works. Mama, it works. So that's, if you talk about a good mother, tell them how to pay their tithes and offer, give to people, Hallelujah, and they won't be knocking on your door. Y'all hear what I'm saying? Hallelujah. Keep them from knocking on your door. Yeah. Amen. Tell them to pay them tithes and offering. They can't help but be blessed. And let me tell you something. When it goes to say, the Bible says he'll give you the desires of your heart, that's when you get into the desires. Now, he's promised he's going to supply with every need. Hallelujah. But when you get to the desires, you know, I want God, this is what I want. You can say, Lord, this is what I want, and he'll give it to you. Better than what you ask for. Yeah. You'll get that abundant blessing. Do I have a witness of that? Yeah. Abundance here. I want the abundance of blessing. Because that's promised to me. Who report are you going to believe? Amen, amen. Amen. But here John is even talking about, in 1 John says, who this was to fulfill which Isaiah said, Lord, who has believed our message? And to whom has the arm, the power of the Lord been shown, unrevealed, Unveil, un, excuse me, unveil and reveal. Therefore, they could not believe. But Isaiah said again, he has blinded their eyes. He has hardened their heart to keep them from seeing with their eyes and understanding with their heart and being converted. Otherwise, I, their God, would heal them. Mm -mm -mm. Who report? Are you going to believe? Now, the world has blinded our eyes. We can't see. Let me tell you something. Yahweh, when we, come when we get saved, we become born again, we see with our spiritual eyes. We do see. We see we're supposed to see things the world doesn't see. See, you, you, you know the word of God. We are telling the world, okay, I'm going to come with this one right here. It's for mothers. They got this new way of raising children now. Mm, 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 mm. What they call it? What they call it? They messing them up, y'all. We see it every day. Now, in Proverbs 22 and 6, Proverbs 22 and 6 said, train up a child. Who report are you going to believe? In the Lord, not in the world. They training them up to function in this world. They're not training them a godly, to have a godly life when they get older. They're training our children the wrong way, and they want us to do it. I told my daughter, that's why it's time to close. When I got to put signs up with two people of the same sex is married, 
See, we as believers, we got to have a standard. Y'all hear what I'm saying? We got to have a standard. Where in the world that tells me? Now, he tell me I'm the light. They say I'm supposed to walk with darkness. I'm a new creation in Christ Jesus, in y'all sure Christ. Old things have passed away. I have become new. He tells us to put away those things. In a new way of, of training children, nobody, I don't hear nobody say nothing about Holly. Proverbs 22 and 6, how we're supposed to train our children. We don't let our children do whatever they want to do. Y'all children are ruling the parents. Parents can't do nothing with their children. They dressing them like the world. They acting like the world. What's going on? And then they tell us, well, you know, uh, 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 this the new generation. But guess what? It's six or six books in the Bible. And these six or six books been here for a long, 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 long time. And nothing has changed in it. <laughs> nothing has changed in it. It's still the same. Yesterday, today, and forevermore, it will still be the same. I was sharing with my husband. I said, you know, back then in the day, we wore, yeah, yeah, yeah. We wore the mini skirts, hot pants. I, it was one to call, I ain't going to call that name, but they were hot pants. They were hotter than the hot pants. <laughs> Y'all remember that? They were hotter than the hot pants. I ain't. We wore the halter top. Well, if you wore a halter top, guess what? It was a halter. I'm going to leave that one alone, too. But, and we see them doing it now. And I told my husband, we was in the world. We didn't know no better. And a lot of them in the world, and they don't know no better either. They're going to do what they know to do. And back there, our parents didn't like it. Guess what? They didn't like it either. They would say something to you about it, but you would sometimes we would sneak that stuff off to somebody else's house and put it on. That's what the world teaches us to be uh, deceptive. You know, your parents tell you something, be rebellious. We rebel ag against what they tell us to do. Amen. Thank God. I tell you what, I, I, I'm going to tell you what I think. If you got children and they're in church, thank the Lord. If you got a husband or spouse in the Lord, thank the Lord. We got so much to thank God for. And if, they, if they're not in the church, keep praying for them. Don't give up on them. I'm a believer. I do not believe in giving up. Pray for your children. Pray for your children. Pray the word over your children. Amen. Let's go to one more scripture. Romans 10, 12 through 17. Amen. Get through this one. But there is no distinction between Jews and Gentiles, for the same Lord is Lord over all of us, and he is abounding in his richest blessing for all who call on him in faith and prayer. For whoever call on the name of the Lord, now listen here, whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. You know, a lot of times, we, we was talking about this in Bible study, a lot of times folks, um, they, they confess with their mouth, but their heart, we, we often wonder, you know, why, you know, why did they go back or what happened? And we know things can happen in their life, but why go back? Why, why, why would you go back in the world? Think about that. Why would you go? If you really confess with your mouth, and you know sometimes us could say, we could say things, but our heart is not in it. But if your heart is really in it, if you really, really, really confess Yahshua Christ is your Lord and Savior. You won't give up on them. You won't walk away from them. I'm just going to be truthful about it. And I put it, if you do, if you do, you won't have peace in your life. Because once you get the taste of him, when you really, really, really get the taste of him, amen, you really get the taste of him, you really, really get the taste of him, you won't turn away. I was 30 when I got saved. I'm 60. I'll be 67 my birthday. And um, I love serving Yahweh. He have never, ever had, I ever had a desire. I don't care how bad things would get in my life, what I would go through, turn back on him, on him that I could talk to any time. 
who's, who, who, who's there for me no matter what I'm going through, no matter how bad I even get, he's always there for me. Amen. No, I will never turn my back on him. Amen. And how will, and how will they, they preach unless they are commissioned and sent for the purpose just as it is written and forever remain written? How beautiful are the feet of those who bring good tidings of Yahweh things. Hallelujah. News of good tidings. But they did not pay attention to the good news of salvation. For Isaiah said, Lord, who believe our report? Look at it. I, this is in, we're in Romans now. Who, who believe our report? We got to believe the word of Yahweh. I'm going to, I, I know my time is short, but I want to do this right here, and I'm going to pray by the Holy Spirit. Moses, if you go to Numbers, real quick for me, and I'm not, we're not going to read that. I'm going to just tell you the story of that. 13. Y'all, all of us know the story about Moses who, um, that they was, the Lord had told them, I'm going to read one part, this is the part I want y'all to really, really get here. Okay. Uh, then the Lord spoke to Moses saying, send men to spy the land of Canaan, which I, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> which I'm going to give the sons of Israel. Now listen here, give to the sons of Israel, give to the sons of Israel, give to the sons. So he had already told them, I'm going to give them the land. The land is theirs. Y'all saw, y'all see what I read there? I'm going to give them the land. So when he told them to go and scout out the land, and, and they came back, they came back with a good report. It was 12. He told them to pick one from each tribe. So it was 12 of them that went, and one of the main ones they talk about is, is Caleb and Joshua. Amen? And he told them, he said, now y'all go scout out the land and, and see, you know, what's going on. Don't worry about it. The land is yours anyway. Okay? Don't, don't you even worry about what you see or what you run across, the land is yours. So they went there, and they came back with fruits and everything. But the knack was in the land. Giants. Now, back there in the day, now, we're looking at them, you know, they came back with the fruit and everything. Why would they be afraid of giants? Back there in the day, them giants was 10 feet tall. Some of them was 10, almost 10 feet tall. That means that you're talking about somebody, you know, double my size, my, my height, Okay. So when they came back with a bad, you had 10 that came back with a good report. Lord told them the land was theirs. And then you had two that came back with a positive report. Said, we could do it. Caleb said, we could go, we could conquer the land. Don't worry about it. Don't, 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 don't even worry about the, 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 men, the, uh, the military men or the giants or whatever. We will be able to uh, uh, conquer and, 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 and get the land. They already knew that. But because the people, let me tell you what they did with, uh, because they believed that they could not conquer the Canaanites, they end up, because they went there for 40 days, 40 days to scout out the land. But every day that they, they was in Canaan scouting out the land, they spent them 40 years in the wilderness. How long do you want to spend in the wilderness, because you don't re believe the report of the Lord. How long do you want to be sick because you don't believe the report of the Lord? How long do you want your, you feel like you can't make ends meet because of your finance is not where you want it to be because you won't believe the report of the Lord? Amen. How long you're going to have trouble on your job because you don't love your neighbor as you should? Amen? Amen. How long? Because the Bible said, whatever you sow, so shall you weep. So if you sow good seeds of kindness, you're going to weep kindness. If you go to acting a fool, they're going to act a fool with you. Who are you going to obey? It's time out for foolishness. We need to obey the word of the Lord. Church, it works. Yeah. It still works. It works. Who report are we going to believe? 
or we're going to believe the report of the world and it's falling apart or we're going to believe Yahweh's word that's true and eternal. This is eternal. This is going to last us forever. No matter what we go through, this is going to last forever. And let me tell you something. We will live forever. We will reign again on this earth, but it will be pure and clean. We're going to live again. And it will be no more pain. We ain't got to worry about cancer, diabetes, high blood pressure, none of that stuff. We ain't got to worry about none of that stuff. To rack our mind that we have to always cast out imagination. Ask for prayer for it and everything. We wouldn't have to worry about stuff like that anymore. Because see, where we're going, it's going to be none of that. Hallelujah. It's going to always be joy and peace in the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. 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 We, we, we're running out the wealth here on earth. But the Bible tells me I'm going to walk on gold. Hallelujah. It's going to be 12 uh, uh, gates. Hallelujah. 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 And I'm going to have mansions. Y'all, let me tell you something. We're going to have mansions we're going to be living in. We're going to know each other. I'm going to see you, Prophetess Benjamin, Tamla, my sister Marie, Sean, Nikki, Eric. I'm going to call y'all names because I, I want y'all to be there. <laughs> John, make sure you're living a holy life. I want to see you. I want to see you, Eric. I want to see you, Erica. Danielle, I want to see you. I want to see you, Prophet T Prophetess Tucker. Prophetess Lee, I want to see y'all. Sandra, I want to see you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want to see you. I want to see you. Hallelujah. 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 I don't want to be there by myself. Hallelujah. John, I want to see you. 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 Hallelujah. We fellowship together. We got the same word. I want to see you. Hallelujah. 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 Woo. Hallelujah. 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 Glory. Reggie, I want to see you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah, glory. Hallelujah. 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 Glory, glory, glory. Hallelujah. 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 Praise Yahweh. Praise Yahweh. I've been saved for a long time. Long, long time. And I'm just not saved just to say I'm saved. I'm saved to receive eternal life. Hallelujah. Glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, I thank you. Woo, I praise you, Yahweh. Hallelujah. 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 I know everybody here is saved. But for some reason or other, you want to rededicate your life to the Lord. Because the Bible said, and I just read it in Romans 10, whosoever call on the name of the Lord, Thou shall be saved. Hallelujah. All you got to do is call on his name. Hallelujah. And believe it in your heart. It's easy. You don't have to pay nothing for this. It is so easy and it costs you nothing but to present your body as a living sacrifice. That's not hard. Used to be a time they had to go get a bull or a bullock and offer it up as sacrifice. All I got to do is say, y'all sure here am I. Here am I. I'm your servant. Use me, Lord. Yahweh wants you. He loves you. But if there's anybody here that's standing in need of prayer, 
But going through something in your body, what Yashir told me to do this morning, we're going to have you to come up, and for those who are watching virtual, put your hands on the area that you want Yahweh to heal you in. He loves us so much, he don't want us to go through anything. Daddy loves us. He loves his children. He don't want us to go through anything. It hurts him when we hurt. And all he tells us, believe my report. Trust in my word. Have faith in me. I love you. It's all right to have that friend, that husband, that, that co-worker that you can talk to, but talk to me. I can do exceedingly above all that you can ask or think. I know your deepest thought. I know them before you thank them. Just talk to me. But if it's anyone here that need prayer or need hands laid on, hallelujah, come up. The Bible says, some people say, some people, y'all, y'all want y'all to get this one right here. Some people say that, um, and, and it, it happened back then, they said that Jesus didn't heal everybody, but the Bible tells me all that came to him in faith. All that came to him in faith, he healed them. He healed them. So when you step out, you think you might be coming to Prophetess Lena for her to lay hands on you or Deacon uh, uh, um, Shields back there to lay hands on, whoever the Lord bring up to, to lay hands. But no, you're walking in faith for, for them to touch and agree with you, for Yahweh to do something in your life to heal you, deliver you. It doesn't always have to be, you know, we could be healed from anything. We could be healed from gossip. We could be healed from negative talk. But if it's anything you stand in need of, Yahweh is here. We everybody please stand. I like that. I'm going to wear a crown. Whether y'all see it or not, I got my crown on now. See, my spirit man is already seated in heavenly places. You can't see it. But I, I got my crown on, and I can't wait to see his face. Now, I'm going to look for y'all, but the first person I'm going to look for is Yashur HaMashiach. Hey, Kola Basaya. Woo, glory. I love y'all now. But I don't love you like I love Yashur. I'm going to look for him. I'm going to seek his face. But I thank God I got my crown on, and I'm going to wear it well. I'm going to wear it everywhere I go. Hallelujah. I'm going to wear it everywhere I go. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I don't care what people say about me. I'm going to wear my crown. Hallelujah. 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 And I don't have to do what the world do to wear it. But if I live a life for Christ, hallelujah. 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 But if anyone here standing in need of prayer, Apostle, will you come forward? I know good about the assay, Katie.
thank Yahweh for our prayer warriors and all those that came up. Can we shout hallelujah? Ah, can we say it again? Hallelujah. Thank him for the healing. Thank him for the difference. Thank him for yoke me to joy. Burden me In the name of Yahshua. Hallelujah. Glory. Glory. Hallelujah. 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 And at this time, we still got all of those prayer requests. Those that was online, if they have tuned off, if they have not, we still going to call those names and pray and intercede for them. Amen. Name. Yeah, we have the, uh, yeah, we have the Kendricks, the Cortez, Juanita Guest, Linfield, the Reeds, Ernest Marine, the Forrest, Laurent Griffin, the Westerns, the Wilsons, and the TYC family. Anyone else? Starting a men's list here, and um, any man or young, any male of any age, hallelujah, put that name on the list, hallelujah, and start interceding for them, hallelujah, glory, hallelujah. If you just stand, let us join in together and pray for those names that were called and. All the bereaved, all those. Hallelujah. Yahweh is able. We're going to relieve Yahshua's report. Hallelujah. Glory. Glory. He's a Yahweh that will never fail. Glory. He can't fail. Hallelujah. Glory. Because he failed, he wouldn't be Yahweh. Hallelujah. He holds fast to his promise, to his word. And all he asked us to do is likewise. Father, in the name of Yahshua, those names that was called, we lift them before you right now. Father, you know what every individual is standing in need of. Hallelujah. You know, hallelujah, glory. You know their weakness. You know what they're dealing with, Father. They have released it unto you by faith. And we know it's already done right now in Yahshua's name. We know that by their stripes, they are, you have already healed them, Father. And we pray that they receive it right now in the name of Yahshua. Father, you have already delivered them. Receive their deliverance right now in Yahshua's name. And Father, comfort them. Heal right now where need to be healed. Not just physically, but mentally. Healing right now. Oh, loose the burden. Hallelujah. Glory to stress. Ah, oppression, depression. Command to loose them right now in the name of Yahshua. And, Father, we give you praise and not to be over anxious about anything, but just trust in the living Yahweh. Yahweh, we give you praise. We give you glory right now, bringing families together, husband, hallelujah, domestic violence, domestic violence. We bind that spirit right now in the name of Yahshua, command it to be loose. Mm, glory, hallelujah. We give you praise today. We give you glory. We give you honor. We come against the spirit of divorces right now. In the name of Yahshua, Father, we give you praise and glory. We honor you for it. Father, you can restore. You can, they can reconcile. Father, you can make it like it never had happened before, making it brand new right now. In the name of Yahshua, we thank you today. And, Father, we give you the praise. We give you the glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Someone might be feeling lonely. But, Father, they don't have to be because you're right there with them. Only they can trust and rely on you, Father. Look to you, Heavenly Father, in the name of Yahshua. Father, we thank you. We come against the spirit of fear right now in the name of Yahshua. It doesn't belong to you. Hallelujah. Because Yahweh have not given us the spirit of fear, but a power of love and of a sound mind. We thank you. And we give you praise. The Father, I hear right now what I'm going to do, what I'm going to do. I don't know what I'm going to do. Turn to Yahshua, and he will show you and tell you what you need to do. Hallelujah. Glory. Hallelujah. Ah, ah, just can't bear it anymore. Cast your cares upon him. Give it all to him. Say, Yahshua, I can't handle it. I can't handle it. Ah, take it off me. Release me from me. From me. He will do that. Just call on him. Just let him know. Give it to him. 
in Yeshua's name. Father, we thank you today, and we give you all the praise and glory. Who report are we going to believe? Father, we're going to believe your report, your word, what you have spoken, Father, what you have done. We're going to stand on it in Yeshua's name, and we give you praise and glory. Yeshua HaMashiach's name we pray. Can we say amen? Be blessed. Hallelujah. Rest in Yahweh. Hold fast. Keep your hands in his hands. Hallelujah. Amen. Happy Mother's Day to all the mothers. Hallelujah. Give the mothers a clap, a hand clap. And <laughs> hallelujah. All the mothers. I knew it tomorrow, but today, hallelujah. To all the mothers. Wasn't for the mothers, the men said nobody wouldn't be here. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory. Hallelujah. Am I right about it? Amen. Hallelujah. Man cannot produce. <laughs> it takes man and woman. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory. And we thank Yahweh for you. You look so blessed today. Look so wonderful. We thank Apostle for that blessed word that she shared. The Holy Spirit allow her to share with us this morning. Hallelujah. We'll have part two tomorrow. Amen. Hallelujah. She allowed the Holy Spirit to use her to bring forth the word. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory. Hallelujah. Powerful word. Hallelujah. All we got to do is believe. Hallelujah. You believe everything else, then start believing the word. Amen. That's true. We believe in a lot of stuff. It can't do nothing for you. But just trust and believe in Yahweh. And see what happens. It works. It works. She might have used tithes and offering money, but it works in every area of your life. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I hear you, Holy Ghost. Every now and then you get like you. You're all by yourself. But I know someone will never leave you nor forsake you. He's always there. See, Yahweh is a spirit. You can't see God. He like the wind. He can blow. You can feel him, though. Hallelujah. That's what the Bible say. The Holy Ghost is like the wind. Blows and breathes on you. And you can feel him sometimes. You can feel him a lot of times. All you can do is talk to him. Share with him. Pour your heart out to him. And I guarantee you, amen, Hallelujah. He released that off of you. Give you peace. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I keep hearing that thing. I don't know what I'm going to do. I don't know what to do. I don't know what I'm going to do. Turn to Yahshua. Turn to him. He already got the answer for you. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And when you get to that crossroad, you don't know which way to go. Holy Ghost, direct me, and he'll show you which way to go. Amen? That's the kind of Yahweh we serve. We thank you, Apostle, for that blessed word once again. May Yahweh continue to richly bless you, keep you, watch over and protect you. Amen, as you bring forth the word. Praise Yahweh. It's been a little while since I heard him speak, but praise Yahweh for it. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory. <laughs> now, I had nothing to do with it. <laughs> So you tell you, I've been talking about ministering and sharing, amen, because I know Yahweh has a word. Yahweh give a word to share for the body and for us to encourage, amen. Deacon Eshia, you have something for, uh, I almost say for me, but it's for the ladies today, amen. <laughs>
Are we still on? We want to thank our viewers once again for tuning in with us this morning. And um, if you have your tithes and offering, you can present them or send them, hallelujah, to address the Temple of Yahshua. It's already on the screen. You can send that to us as well. And may you have a blessed, prosperous, and favorable week as you go forward. Amen. Hallelujah. And may Yahweh continue to bless each and every one of you. And have a blessed, prosperous, and favorable and anointed week. Amen.